Elizabeth Munro, she was a force, the force. I mean, Elizabeth Munro had the most remarkable past. I mean, uh, she, she began life um, as a staffer, uh, her professional career, as a staffer for the League of Nations and then Chatham House. She, during the Second World War, she was in the Middle East Information Division for the British government. And then she spent, I think, a good 15 years working for The Economist. So this brought her journalist side out, and it was during this period that she got to know Teddy Hodgkin very well, who became deputy editor of the Times. So she sharpened her journalistic teeth. And um, then after Albert Hurani became director at the Middle East Centre in Oxford at St Anthony's, she was invited to be, the, I think, their first fellow. And she and Albert Hurani together built up the um, Middle East Centre's wonderful archive. So when, when Liz Munro um, got in touch with some of us about founding the Friends of Beers at University, she came with a wonderful gathering of journalists, academics, well-regarded people, or wonderful writers for Times Letters. Um, she had them all there in her Montague Square flat, ready to pounce um, and get this um, organisation going. So she was an ideal character. And it was Eleanor Aitken, I think, who chose Liz Munro to take this forward because Eleanor Aitken, of course, was busy with UNIPAL, her organisation which deals with exchanges between um, Palestinian universities and, and British universities. So um, Liz Munro was also, um, she, she, was not, she was calm, but she was opinionated. Um, so she did not mind at all speaking out for the Palestinians when she felt that was um, the right thing to do um, in the most um, illustrious circles. So she, she would do that. Um, the foreign office officials didn't bother her at all as she was going against the grain. She would say what she thought. And she kept writing really until um, the end of her life for various Middle East journals. She wrote that famous book, Britain's Moment in the Middle East, and the biography of St. John Philby. So she's well regarded too as an academic writer. Liz Monroe was definitely a, a mover and a shaker and she helped to shape my professional career. I think Roger Hardy's too. And she was very well regarded by people who were slightly older than us but younger than herself. Peter Mansfield, Keith Carl from Chatham House. So um, she has a very important place in the history of academic life in this country. She was a force. The Force.